The chorus of international condemnation over Israel's genocidal war on Gaza mounts. UN agencies, rights organizations and world leaders have expressed concern, although this does not seem to have any effect on Israel's impunity. A new report by the Food and Agricultural Organization says that famine is projected to occur any time between now and May 2024 in the northern parts of Gaza. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres termed the report an appalling indictment of the conditions on the ground for civilians. He said that this is an entirely man-made disaster. Meanwhile, the United Nations Children's Fund has said that over 13,000 children have died in Gaza and many more don't even have the energy to cry. We go to Abdul for the latest from the ground. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. A host of reports now from the FAO for the United Nations Children's Fund. Could you tell us what all of these reports are uh, talking about the humanitarian situation in Gaza right now? Well, Prashant, uh, most of the reports uh, prepared by the UN agencies uh, about the humanitarian situation in Gaza have similar things, by and large, similar things to say. And those are, those things, uh, there are common points in most of them. Of course, they're saying that how uh, around 2 million plus Palestinian people who are living in uh, Gaza, uh, who, are, who are basically suffering uh, because of the war, which has been, uh, which is ongoing for more than five months now, uh, are now, uh, has be, have been systematically deprived of their basic humanitarian needs like food, uh, medicine, water uh, and other uh, essential commodities uh, which basically has led to a situation where there now we see large-scale malnutrition among the Palestinian population. As per, uh, for example, as per the UNRWA report, uh, around half of the uh, people in Gaza are basically at the at a very uh, acute level of malnutrition they are facing and they are uh, they are on the verge of they are at the risk of um, uh, uh, kind of uh, facing famine of some uh, uh, soon uh, in a similar way uh, uh, unicef uh, for example is saying that uh, hundreds of thousands of palestinian children are deprived of uh, nutrition, which ultimately leads to uh, 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 stunted growth uh, if they are surviving. Of course, there are reports coming that uh, a large number of Palestinian children have, di children have died because of the lack of uh, uh, nutrition, lack of food. Uh, and that basically, the number has is increasing uh, every day. Um, so, uh, uh, UNICEF report is saying that there, uh, there is a, a danger that majority of the Palestinian children will, be f will basically face uh, a, a level of starvation which will ultimately lit lead to uh, uh, a, a generation uh, 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 which basically will be stunted uh, if, if they survive the war. Um, uh, that is, of course, uh, there are also reports coming that uh, which basically uh, measuring the level of starvation uh, across uh, Gaza. Uh, one of the reports uh, indicate that uh, though the entire Gaza is uh, uh, under a severe, uh, um, uh, 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 in a stage uh, in which it is, there is a severe malnutrition, acute uh, 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 deficiency in terms of supply of basic food and nutrition uh, uh, nutrition to the large number of palestinians but particularly in the northern gaza which has which we all remember that ever since the war began that was the first uh, region which was evac forcefully evacuated uh, most of the houses there are destroyed a very small population which uh, now lives there uh, 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 despite all the bombings and so on and so forth is primarily deprived of uh, uh, a humanitarian aid, which primarily reaches Gaza through the southern borders, uh, which are there in Rafah and other places. Uh, so uh, uh, this aid is not able to reach an, a northern Gaza. Uh, so though the overall aid availability of aid is less uh, all across Gaza, but particularly the northern in northern Gaza, the situation is quite severe. And uh, as per the, the reports claim by IPC, uh, today is March uh, 19th. Uh, 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 it seems that uh, the, the fifth stage of, there are five stages according to their calculation uh, of uh, 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 five levels of uh, starvation. And uh, Northern Gaza is already into the 
fifth uh, stage, uh, which is the highest stage of malnutrition uh, and lack of food, which equals to famine. Uh, 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 and that's what is happening all across uh, 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 Gaza. Right, Abdul, in this context, could you also tell us a bit about what is happening on the ground in terms of the fighting? We know that attacks are continuing in Gaza. We know that there have been attacks around the Al Shifa hospital as well. So, could you give us an update? Well, Prashant, the, uh, uh, when we are talking about the state of war in, in Gaza, uh, 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 of course, uh, one can say that after a point, there is hardly anything new to add. The fact is, every day, a uh, similar story is repeated uh, for last five and uh, half months uh, that uh, Israel is bombing Rafah, Israel is bombing uh, Khan Yunis, Israel is bombing different other parts of uh, the besieged territory and there are ground offensives uh, going on. For example, uh, Al Sifa Hospital is facing uh, Israeli ground offensive for, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not correct, uh, the fifth or sixth time since the war began uh, on October 7. And uh, uh, every time uh, Al Shifa Hospital is attacked, um, Israeli forces indiscriminately bomb uh, the hospital premises, uh, shoot inside the hosp hospital premises, kill uh, innocent civilians which have gone there to get treatment uh, because of the wounds uh, they, they have been uh, uh, suffering because of the Israeli bombings and, uh, 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 and other uh, war activities carried out by Israel. So, um, similar things are happening in Rafah despite the warnings, repeated warnings that Rafah, since it is a home of more than 1.5 million uh, Palestinians now who have been forced out of other parts of the uh, besieged territory living there. And this is very densely populated area. So any kind of bombing will lead to large scale casualties. And uh, uh, but Israel never listens to uh, all those warnings, does not care about them, in fact, and repeatedly uh, uh, bombs. For example, in the latest bombing uh, on uh, Tuesday, uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 14 people uh, were, were killed, including children, in one, one of the houses which was uh, uh, the target of the attack. Uh, so you can understand the amount of ca uh, casualties which is basically created by uh, Israel's indiscriminate bombing uh, inside Rafah and other, uh, uh, for example, attacks on Al Shifa Hospital, where more than uh, 100 people were killed uh, on uh, on Monday and uh, on Tuesday. So, um, uh, apart from that, as I said, I was saying before, the uh, Israel has been uh, preventing all, uh, all kinds of uh, humanitarian aid and support to reach. Uh, the affect, war affected population. Uh, of course, they uh, prevent uh, medical care, they prevent uh, the aid agencies to reach the affected people effectively, uh, creating different kinds of hurdles. But at the same time, they also do not allow the aid to flow into uh, Gaza. The, 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 as per the claims made by uh, UN agencies, there is enough aid uh, uh, which is there available, uh, but there that all of the aid is basically uh, blocked out of uh, Gaza. Uh, uh, hundreds of trucks are stationed uh, at the Rafah border at the moment with the humanitarian aid inside, but they are not allowed to go in, inside Rafah by the Israeli forces, uh, citing different kinds of uh, excuses. Uh, once they, uh, uh, they claim that uh, some of the humanitarian aid has uh, scissors and which basically can be used as lethal weapon and hence they uh, um, uh, basically uh, since then they have started in inspecting all the boxes uh, which basically carry uh, such kind of aid to Gaza. They have also uh, used the excuse of large scale gathering for the delivery of aid. So therefore they want to slow down the, uh, uh, the movement of aid so that the, uh, apparently that will prevent large scale gathering. Uh, but all these things uh, we all know uh, are tactics used to deliberately starve uh, Palestinians, to force them uh, 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 to leave. And if they are not leave, leaving, to kind of uh, kill them if uh, if uh, that's what is required. So it seems that Israel ha has completely decided uh, to uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of take out uh, 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 
basically uh, attack Palestinian population the way it wants, and it has uh, uh, and no kind of. Uh, 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 it seems that there is hardly any uh, eff effective pressure uh, created by the international community uh, to kind of uh, to stop uh, to make Israel stop these kind of uh, both the, uh, the access to aid, aid uh, to the Palestinians and at the same time uh, to end the war uh, in the region. Thank you so much, Abdul. But stay back. We'll come back to you for the next story. Our next story is from West Africa, where Niger has revoked a military accord that allows U.S. personnel to be posted in the country. This was allegedly after a U.S. delegation reta threatened retaliation against the largest country in West Africa for its ties with Iran and Russia. Now, a question mark hangs over the three strategically crucial U.S. military bases in the country, including the world's largest drone base in the central Nigerian city of Agadez. Just a few months ago, Niger's former colonizer, France, was forced to remove its troops after its post coup government demanded the same. The latest decision by Niger's government is the latest twist in what has been a series of massive political developments since the coup in July 2023. We go back to Abdul for details. Welcome back, Abdul. A very momentous development, it would seem, first. French troops are forced to withdraw and now a demand, similar demand made of the US. But could you first take us through what are the US facilities in the region and, you know, what this could mean for that and what were the reasons exactly cited? Well, Prashant, the government in Niger has uh, declared the presence of US forces in the country as illegal. Of course, the, it, it is not clear whether this would mean uh, that the US forces which are there in the country, around 1,100 of them, uh, will have to leave uh, the three different bases which are there in the country, or there will be some other arrangement made. But so far, it, the one thing is clear, that this came after a uh, U.S. delegation released uh, uh, the uh, Niger government, CNSPC, Niger government, uh, kind of threatening them to not have a relationship or, uh, with Russia, or any, uh, in fact, Iran uh, or any other country, uh, and kind of threatening uh, them uh, of any uh, of some kind of retaliation again if uh, Niger moves towards Russia or uh, develops relationship with Iran and so on and so forth. Of course, uh, the Niger government did not uh, uh, appreciate uh, that that this kind of dictation uh, uh, of what Niger should do or should not do. We should remember that this is the same government which uh, basically uh, 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 by kind of uh, uh, pushed the French uh, troops to move the country uh, uh, and has basically been very consistent in its position uh, that the uh, imperialist interventions in the country, uh, in the domestic affairs of the country and its independent foreign policy will not be tolerated. Uh, so, uh, uh, as far as the, uh, as I said before, there are three different kinds of bases uh, US has in the country. One, of course, two of them are air bases, uh, one in based uh, is based in Nimai, another one is based in uh, uh, Agadez. And, and uh, both of them, them are quite large, built with uh, over $100 million of, uh, of expenditure cost. And, and, and uh, every year, uh, US spends millions of dollars to kind of maintain those bases, given the fact that they, they considered the presence of US troops in the country, in Niger, uh, essential for their uh, global empire. In, uh, so one of the bases in Agadez, for example, is world's largest uh, drone base. Uh, 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 the air base in Nimai is one of the largest air bases in the, on the African continent. Uh, the third base, uh, which was operated by, which has been operated by CIA for a very long time, uh, in, as a secret base is now, of course, there is an expose uh, that the, it has become uh, a public knowledge uh, that uh, CIA operates a smaller base as well in Niger. Uh, for a very long time, uh, the, the governments, uh, the previous governments in Niger have used uh, those, uh, the U.S. military presence in, in their advantage to uh, kind of suppress use them as a threat against the domestic dissent, uh, against the forces which are basically trying to, uh, which try to question uh, uh, them. And therefore, uh, uh, 
but we know that ever since this new government has come, which has a, a, a pan-African outlook, which has an anti-imperialist outlook, uh, which basically uh, claims to uh, kind of work for independence of the Nizers and its foreign policy, uh, it, uh, of course, this has a different approach. And it, there is also a very strong popular support uh, for uh, whatever steps it has taken uh, against all kinds of intervention in the country, external intervention in the country, including uh, the military presence of France, the earlier colonial power. Right. And how do you think, Abdul, this development sort of, you know, what are the implications for the larger region as a whole? We, on this show, we've talked about how West Africa has been drastically changing uh, since the Niger coup, but even before that, we have Mali, Burkina Faso, etc. So this latest development, how do you think it plays into all of that? Uh, well, Prashant, as far as... Um, uh, the possible implications of U.S. withdrawal from Niger is concerned. Uh, there are, uh, we can see it on two levels, of course. One is at the domestic level, uh, the government, uh, Niger government, uh, the, uh, uh, is a new government, of course, which has come to power through uh, uh, military intervention. And uh, it has been seeking legitimacy uh, uh, while taking, uh, uh, taking up popular uh, demands, popular issues which have been uh, 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 primarily anti-imperialistic uh, and anti-colonial. Uh, uh, for example, uh, the steps taken against the presence of France, uh, given the fact that France was involved in the economic exploitation and uh, has a long history, had a long history of human rights violations through its uh, military in the country, US does not have a different history. Uh, it has a similar history as France. It has basically used its military forces to not only uh, uh, exploit, uh, uh, facilitate the colonial exploitation of a uh, country's resources and uh, 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 in collaboration with the ruling classes in the country to pressurize and consistently violate the rights of the common uh, people in, the con in Niger. And therefore, there is a strong popular sentiment against the presence of U.S. troops. So if the Niger government takes the decision ultimately to ask the U.S. forces to move out of the country, of course, uh, the, there is a possibility that this will increase the popularity of the current government uh, um, in power. Um, uh, and that, that will lead to... Uh, 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 as far as the reason is concerned, will lead to a greater consolidation of the efforts which most of the countries have now started taking in the region, as we uh, saw, uh, as we saw uh, during um, uh, in the last in last year, how uh, the three different governments came together in the region and uh, basically stood against the uh, imperialist attempts to kind of intervene and uh, and so and so forth so that will lead to strengthening of uh, such powers which have been standing against the colonial uh, uh, operation colonial hegemony uh, in the region and that would also mean that the us will lose a very strategic uh, 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 position uh, on the african continent uh, it will also uh, affect its grober uh, global presence because we know how U.S. uses its military bases, hundreds of military bases all across the globe to maintain its hegemony, uh, uh, its, uh, uh, its global empire. And if they are forced to withdraw from Niger, that would mean that uh, there is a, a strong uh, uh, dent in that capacity, to uh, uh, their hegemonic capacity. So uh, uh, if the events uh, turn out to be similar to what happened to the French troops in Niger. Of course, this will lead to both uh, uh, domestic consolidation um, behind the current government in Niger, will lead to strong em emergence of stronger regional powers, uh, which will be able to stand against all kind of bullying and colonial interventions, which the Africa, most of the African countries have been subjected to for centuries. And, 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 and in a way, we can say that this is, uh, if this happens, um, that will be good for the, uh, globe, uh, uh, for the democratic uh, movements all across the globe. Thank you so much, Abdul, for those updates. And that's all we have time for in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Thank <laughs> you.